So hello everyone, Raza Dorani here. Today we're going to talk about Project Oakdale in a very short duration and then quickly look at a solution that I built for expense reporting and plugged it into the new Project Oakdale platform, which is basically the merger of Microsoft Teams and the Power Platform. So Power Apps, as everyone knows, is the low-code application development platform. You can come here and build a wide variety of apps and connect to n number of data sources. The platform in itself, the Power Platform, comes with a data layer that it exposes, which is called the Common Data Service, which has powerful, rich data types. It's a relational data model, and it's built for scalability. On the other side of the spectrum, in M365, we have Microsoft Teams, which is our hub for teamwork. And in Teams, typically for building applications, uh, you need to probably have more pro dev skills in order to build apps and deploy them into Teams. Now, Power Apps makes that really easy in a low code, no code experience. So, would it not be great if we could merge the two together, whereas we can leverage the Power Platform along with the data layer, which is CDS, and have all of that experience directly in Microsoft Teams? And that is exactly what Project Oakdale is. Project Oakdale is the code name for now. This name is going to change in future. Basically, this is a low-code data platform that has been built for your Microsoft Teams. And the way you get started with this is in Microsoft Teams on the left-hand navigation rail. If I head over to the three ellipses, all I have to do is search for the app called Power Apps. And once I have this app and once I install this app, right here within the context of Microsoft Teams, I get this experience of building apps using Power Apps for Microsoft Teams. And if I head over to the Build tab right here, this will list out all my Microsoft Teams for which I have gone ahead and created an app. Now in my scenario, of course, we just have 15 minutes, so I'm gonna be respectful of that time. I have already gone ahead and created certain artifacts with respect to my Microsoft Team. So I have a team here called PlayZone, and if I head over to See All, this will list out all the artifacts associated with my Microsoft Team. Now, the key thing to understand about Project Oakdale is you can build apps, you can build flows, you can also build chatbots using Power Virtual Agents. And all of these three things can leverage the low-code data platform, which is embedded directly for your team. It's like a light version of CDS. And right here, if I head over to tables, these are all the data tables that I can create within the context of my Microsoft team. And all of this at no additional licensing cost. Your standard office licenses will give you access to all of this. So for building bots, no premium licensing. For building apps and flows that talk to your data tables embedded in your Microsoft team, no premium licensing required whatsoever. So that's the beauty of Project Oakdale. Now, in my scenario, I would like to demo an application that I built leveraging Project Oakdale. And uh, the idea for this actually came up with one of the templates in Power Apps. So if I head over to Power Apps, and if I go to Home, there is this small little link that is extremely difficult to uh, look at. It's right here. It is called All Templates. And if I head over here, this will list out a lot of the templates that were created by Microsoft for the Power Apps. Now, of course, most of these templates are pretty old and some of the patterns in them are also outdated. So let me warn you uh, before starting to use them. But right here, there is a template called expense reporting. It's called the My Expenses template. And of course, this template, although it says connects to SharePoint and reality, it does not. Uh, it just connects to a very simple Excel file, I believe. And, and it's just a good starter boilerplate template to get started with. So what I was able to do is I was actually able to leverage this template, enhance it, and use the data platform capabilities in Project Oakdale and come up with an expense reporting solution. So the next step, what I will do is I will go ahead and project my screen from my mobile device. So I will head over to Teams. And right here, I have the context of Microsoft Teams. Now, leveraging Project Oakdale, you can quickly build apps and push those apps to your teams. So here is my team right here on the top called PlayZone. If I head over to my team, and if I head over to more on the top right-hand corner, I have my expense reporting app that I built leveraging Oakdale right here on the context of teams. And if I select this, 
this will actually go ahead and open up my app right within Microsoft Teams. And this now is my expense reporting application that leverages the data platform which Oakdale provides for my Microsoft team. And this is listing out all my expenses currently. I can categorize my expenses based on the status of the expense, whether they are pending, approved, rejected, or I can see all my expenses in one go. Now let's go ahead and create a new expense. So I'll go ahead and create a new expense. I will call this the community call expense. I can give this a start date and an end date. Notice the usage of the controls and the theming that matches the theming of Microsoft Teams. So I will pick today's date, end date is today's date. I can go ahead and pick a cost center associated with my expense. I will pick Contoso and I will go ahead and plug in a few commands and I will click create. Now the moment I do this, this has gone ahead and created an expense for me in my Oakdale environment. Now this what you're looking at right now is leveraging the data platform for Teams. And I'm using a lighter version of the data platform which is CDS which enables a relational data model. So right here for an expense, I can add multiple line items. So let me go ahead and add a line item. A line item basically is a receipt that I can upload related to my expense. Now right here in the context of Teams once again, I can go ahead and upload a receipt. This is using the image data type in Oakdale. So I'll go ahead and say upload a receipt. And because I am on my mobile device, I have the option of opening my camera. So let me go ahead and do this. And right here on my desk, I have a fake receipt that I stole from the web. So this is not me. And I'll go ahead and take a picture. So I've basically right now using my camera, just taken the picture of a receipt. And the moment I do this, I'm actually leveraging Azure Cognitive Services now, which calls in the receipt scanning component. And that will go ahead and process the receipt and get the information. So I was just talking to waste time. If you notice right there on the bottom, it gives me the name of the merchant. It gives me the total cost and it also gives me the transaction date. All of this leveraging Azure Cognitive Services. Next, I can go and pick the category associated with my expense. This is food and beverage give a description, so I'll call this a virtual lunch, and then I will click on save. And just like that, I added a line item and related it to the expense. That's the relational data structure right here in action. If you look at my expense at the bottom, if I select the attachment, it will actually open that same image that I just captured right here live. And of course, I can go ahead and add additional receipts related to my expense, and all of these expenses get added up together and I can see the total expense cost right here. Now once I'm done with this, I will go ahead and click on the submit button. And the moment I hit submit, what happens now is this data gets recorded of course. However, at the same time, I'm leveraging Power Automate to start an approval process. So let's go ahead and let's go back to my teams. Now, uh, what has happened is I went ahead, I created an expense and uh, I submitted my expense. And the moment I submit my expense, what it does is it basically records it in the system. And based on the cost center, I have dynamically defined my approvals. I will show you how I did that in the data layer when I show you the tables. So right now what's happening is a flow is getting triggered and that flow is going to send out an adaptive card. Why? Because I want to stay in the context of teams to my approver dynamically. So my approver can go and approve or decline the request. Now, I'm, it takes typically 10 to 15 minutes, so I went and pre-created something. As you can see, here is the adaptive card in action right here. So this is the adaptive card that my approval will receive. And in this adaptive card, I have a link directly to my receipt. And if I select this, this will actually open up that same app in the context of Teams. Well, it's just opening a new tab. And not just that, it will also deep link me directly into that expense item for which I am performing the approval action. And I can see the same details right here. I can look at the, the user has uploaded. I can see all the details right here. And once I want to take a decision, I can go ahead and either approve this or reject this right here within the context of Teams. And once I click on submit, my approval decision is recorded. All of this information goes back into my data layer, which is my Oakdale uh, platform. That information is recorded there and the user who created the expense is notified that your expense is currently approved in the system. 
Now, if I head back as Raza, once again, who is the person who created the expense, and if I head back to the expense reporting app, this time on my browser in Teams, this is the community call prep that I just approved, and this is the approval task right here of $82.98. So you can build apps, you can build flows, you can use the relational data model, but there's more. You can also use Power Virtual Agents to build chatbots. And all of this at no additional cost. So I went ahead and built a chatbot as well that talks to the same data platform. And this bot is something that I can interact with directly in Microsoft Teams. So once again, on my left-hand navigation rail, I have my expense reporting bot. So let me go ahead right here and say, hello. I'm gonna try and zoom in as well. So I just said, hello. And the bot responded with, hi Reza, I'm a virtual agent. I can help you with details regarding your expense reports. Now. The bot is contextually aware of the logged in user. So it knows that it's me, Reza Dorani. And I'm going to say, I need details of my expense, expense report. So I need details around my expense report. It goes ahead and tells me, okay, so what is the status of the expense you're looking out for? Maybe I'm going to say, I am not bothered about the status. Just show me everything related to a status. And the next question is enter the dollar amount. So I'm searching for expenses greater than what? So maybe I'm gonna say what, you know, $50. And once I do that, it will go ahead and actually trigger a flow. The flow will query my data source, get that information, pick the data and post that information back right here to my bot. And as you can see, it's gone ahead and showed me all those expenses that are above $50. And at the same time, because I selected status as all, it's going to show me everything, whether they are rejected thing or whether they are approved. And in this as well, this is doing the deep linking functionality. So if I pick the Microsoft Ignite uh, related expense that was rejected, if I select this, it will once again open the app and deep link directly. Expense. I can see it in action. So you can build bots, you can build flows, you can build apps. All of this at no additional licensing cost directly in the context of Teams. Now, if I head back to my Microsoft Teams and if I head over to Power Apps and if I head over to the Build tab once again, I just want to show you what the back end looks like. So, this is my team. And in this team, if I head over to Apps, you can build multiple apps per team. So, you're not restricted to just building one app. So, as you can see right here, I have an expense reporting app, I have a help desk app that I've built for this specific team. If I head over to chatbots, this is gonna list out all the chatbots that are associated with this team. If I head over to flows, it's gonna list out all the flows. So you can build flows, apps, and bots. The key here is in the tables that I'm leveraging, which is the relational data model that's baked in right here for you in the context of Microsoft Teams. Now in my scenario, remember I created expenses, did line items. So if I head over to expenses, and if I go to quick edit, they've kind of given a SharePoint-like experience right here, which is very cool. As you can see, this is listing out all the expenses that are being logged in my system. And all that information is right here. And remember, this is a relational data model. So I have related this to other tables. For example, I have a table called line items. This is where all those individual line items are mapped and they are related to an expense. And here is that lookup column, which is a true lookup because it's creating the relationship. Even the receipts that I uploaded, you can see those images right here in the quick edit mode. And finally, I have my third table, which is called cost center. And when the user picks a cost center, when they are creating a receipt, this is where I'm dynamically defining my approvers. So in my scenario, because I picked the cost center as Contoso, James gets the approval action. If, it, if I picked it as Microsoft, then Reza would get it. So I can dynamically define my approvals as well and leverage flow to talk to the same backend data source. So this was all about uh, the expense reporting solution. I think this is something that is pretty cool. And all of this, what I built, by the way, is I built it in 10 hours flat. Why? Because I reused a lot of things. I, I reused one of the existing templates. I used Project Oakdale, quickly build these tables and create these relationships. Just push, push my app into Project Oakdale, copy paste stuff in there and uh, connect things, build a flow, build approvals and the chatbot experience as you saw it in action. That's it for my demo for today. I hope you guys liked it. Raza, Daniel had a quick question. Um, he wants to know yes. 
Could that could that have been a multi-step uh, approval? Absolutely, yes. It could have been a multi-step approval process. It could be any kind of approval process you desire. This is Flow. Uh, whatever you can do in Flow, you can do it right here as well. Any other questions? I think a lot of people are really helping each other in chat with most of the questions right now, Reza. Nothing popping out at me. I like the new things you added to it since I saw it last time. Nice little enhancements there. It looks really nice. I would just well like done. to give one one shout out, please, from my side. I would like to give a shout out shout out to that API guy, Vivek Bhavishi. Uh, the there is no AI builder today in uh, Project Oakdale. I really hope it comes in future. Currently, it's not available. So if you noticed when I added my receipt, it went ahead and scanned the receipt for me using the receipt scanning component. All of that, uh, I used one of the videos that uh, Vivek put out and uh, put that in action right here in my app because I just wanted to use the receipt scanning component. So thank you, Vivek. Nice.